So, uh, verse 42, But Jesus called them to him and saith unto them, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister, and whosoever of you will be chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So we talked about provoking unto love. I mean, provoking unto, part of that, part of provoking unto love and good works is, you know, provoking us unto good works. I'm just going over a couple of things that are good works. So we talked about love, but service, you know, serving one another, you know, having this frame of mind that you are not here to be served, but you are here to serve. The, uh, Jesus is saying here that the greatest or the chiefest among you shall be servant of all. And that's why, you know, I as the bishop of this church, I strive to, to serve you. And I don't mind like being on the barbecue while you guys are fellowshipping and doing stuff and, and, and getting everything done because, you know, I, I want to serve you guys. But, you know, I also don't want you guys to have the frame of mind that you're here to be served. You know, if everybody comes to church with the frame of mind to serve, that is a really good ground of truth and a ground that's going to provoke us unto love and good works. And it's the same in your marriage. You know, if you have a frame of mind where your wife is there to serve you or your husband's there to serve you, you're going to have a, a, a bad marriage. But if you have the frame of mind where both of you are trying to serve one another, that is one way you can have a really good marriage because, uh, you know, you're not, you don't get upset at each other. Because you're not upset at her because she didn't do something for you because you're not there for her to serve you. You're there to serve her. And if you both have that frame of mind, man, that's how you can have a, a really good marriage. So because we should be served. You know, I do have an expectation for you guys to come here and to get involved. You know, I do have an expectation for you guys to help with the cooking, to help with the cleaning, to help with the pack up and the set down, to help with all that sort of stuff. Um, so definitely expect you guys to, to help out during church. You know, I also expect you guys to get involved with the soul winning. You know, I'm never going to, you know, force you or make you feel bad for not going because I understand everyone has different situations. Everyone's at different walks in their life. But yeah, I definitely expect everyone to strive to get to that point where they are involved in the soul winning. They are involved in the outreach and they are part of uh, what we're doing here. Because I want you to grow. You know, because if you, you know, maybe if you've been coming along this church and you're new here, everything's exciting, everything's fun. You know, we're a new church. So it's, it's exciting just to be here and to just be a part of it. But I tell you what, like if you're going to this church week after week after week for months and months and years and years and you don't go soul winning, eventually this is not going to do much for you. You know, the fellowship is not going to do much for you because you have to actually start doing the exercise. You know, you can take in all the spiritual food and the spiritual fellowship, but if you're not actually exercising it and working those spiritual muscles, you're not going to grow and get stronger in your faith. So that's, that's a big reason why I want you guys to get involved in the soul winning, so that you'll grow, because you learn, you learn tons out soul winning. And um, yeah, there's just so many advantages that I won't go into right now. But come to church with an attitude of service, guys. You know, come here to serve. And what are some telltale, si telltale signs of a person that comes to church with the attitude of being served? Well, here's a couple of things that people say. Um, I've just got two examples, but you know, you know, often people will go to church and they'll say like, oh, that church was not very friendly. You know, I went to that church, they weren't really friendly. They didn't invite me to this or that. They didn't like, nobody came and said hello to me. You know, I got out of church and you know, nobody's messaging me, nobody's texting me to see how I am. And, you know, and that's all fine. I think a church should do that. But somebody with that attitude, they're going to a church to be served. Because think about it, that's all like, what is it? This church didn't do anything for me. Like, you know, I was out of church and nobody contacted me and nobody's friendly to me. But that's not the sort of attitude we should go with to church. We should go with an attitude, of, of, uh, an attitude to serve. So instead of thinking nobody was friendly to me, I should be going to church saying, hey, I'm going to be friendly to somebody today. I'm going to text somebody today. I'm going to message somebody today. I'm going to have somebody over for dinner today. You know, not, oh, you know, I went to this church, nobody invited me over to dinner, I'm inviting everyone else over to dinner, but I haven't been invited to dinner yet. You know, so th this is how you can tell, you know, do you have the attitude when you come to church of service? Or do you have the attitude of being served? You know, it's like when people, you know, you get out of church at the end and people are like, oh, the food's not even ready yet. That shows that you've got an attitude of being served instead of, hey, the food's not ready yet, what can I do to help get it ready? 
So you see, so you can see by what you say is showing whether you're coming with the right attitude to church or not. It's the same when people are like, you know, saying hello. I guess it's the same topic. They'll say like, oh, I went to church and nobody said hello to me. That shows that people are coming to church to be served. Because if you come to church to serve, you're going to be the one trying to say hello to people, you know, and say, hey, I want to be a, I want to come to church and I want to be a blessing to somebody today as opposed to I want to come to church and where's my blessing, right? So let's have the right frame of mind. And if we do, I think it'll provide a much better atmosphere in our church when it's a, a church of service.